Hello friends, hello Facebook. If you are watching this, this is the replay. Um, super excited to have you here. It is, today is day one of our 12 days of Stampin' Up! Christmas. And today we are going to be going over essential tools and why they're so important to your card making. And we're gonna be creating a super cute card using items out of our mini catalog. So this is my July through December 2022 mini catalog. So if you're catching this on the replay, today is December 1st, 2022. Uh, so some of the specials I'm talking about today, if you're catching the replay, might not uh, be live anymore. But if you are live with us, hello, nice to see you. Um, I'm excited you could join us today. We have some really, really fun products and some fun specials going on right now. So let me just quickly tell you about the specials and we'll jump into our essential tools. So big special that's going on right now is everything out of our mini catalog is now while supplies last. So most of the items in here are retiring and that means you, once they're gone, they're gone. So if there's anything you love, in this catalog and if you haven't gotten a catalog message me i'll get you one out um or you can jump on the website the link will be above uh i want you to have the opportunity to get it because there's already a couple things and i'll show you as i'm demoing that have already sold out <laughs> um, i planned all this this morning and they're already gone so uh i don't want you to miss them two there's some really good specials on these items as well so there's a couple items that are on sale I'll show those to you as well uh, for a really good discount, but again, it's while supplies last. Third thing is our clearance rack was refreshed today as well. So there is tons of new items on the clearance rack. So take a look at that. Make sure you click the link for shopping, hit clearance rack, and you'll get to see all of the really awesome specials on retired product that we have available. But today, today is the first day of our Stampin' Up! Christmas. So we are going to be looking at the four things that I think are essential tools that every crafter should have. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera real quick. Don't mind my messy desk here. There we go. All righty. So I'm gonna slide us over so we can see everything that's going on today. Isn't our card cute? All right, so on my list of essentials, right out of our out of our annual catalog, so all of these essentials I'm showing today are in our annual catalog, and you can go right online to purchase them. The first, and I will say probably my most favorite tool that I use all the time is is our stamp and trimmer. So this, this is our uh, paper trimming tool. It comes with two types of blades on it. The darker one is your cutting blade. So that's gonna cut into your paper and give you that nice, straight, perfect edge. The second is our scoring blade. And the really awesome thing about that scoring blade is it's gonna give you those crisp lines so when you're folding your paper, you're gonna have those exact nice lines. The other thing I super love about it is its size. I can get a piece of 12 by 12 paper in here, but I can actually get larger pieces of paper in here because the ends extend past the, um, the ruler here. So you can actually get some larger paper in here if you have that or if you're trying to cut it in an angle. Um, sometimes I like to take some of my 11 inch, my eight and a half by 11, turn it and cut it in an angle um, for some of those fun fold cards. And you're able to do that because it's a little bit longer on the sides here. The other thing that's really cool about it is you've got the rest that pops out for you. So you can actually measure all the way up to 17 inches on this, which is huge. Um, I'll be honest, I don't remember a time I've ever measured 17 inches on my <laughs> on my paper trimmer. I just don't have paper that's that big. Um, 
but I definitely use this quite a bit because I like to be able to turn my paper and when I'm doing samplers or anything with 12 inch paper, this helps out a ton. So, alrighty. That is our paper trimmer. If you love it, let me know. That's one of our favorites. Also, since we're going over four products today, sorry, I forgot to say this at the beginning. Um, if you comment in the comment section here, which one of these four is your favorite um, of the four I'm showing today? Which one is your favorite? I'm gonna get you entered into our drawing, which we will do tomorrow night for the cards that we're making today. So we're gonna make two cards today and I've got a few extras I'm gonna put in your package as well. So go ahead and comment with which one is your favorite. So we've got our paper trimmer again, it's my favorite, my favorite essential tool. And that's just because I use this for everything. Now, one of the best tools that you could ever have is a great pair of scissors. So these are our paper snips. Wow, I've got quite the shadow, sorry about that. Um, but our paper snips are awesome because they're super sharp. So be careful if you've got kiddos, you probably don't want them playing with these if they're little. Um, they're very sharp at the tip. That allows you to get into those little crevices of paper and have some really, really crisp lines, which I love because um, I'm not a big fussy cutter. I don't know about you guys. That's not my favorite thing to do. But when I do fussy cut, I want scissors that are actually going to cut the paper and do a good job with it. So. There we go. Let me get rid of some of that shadow there. Sorry. Um, so that's why I love these ones so much. The other thing is, again, they're super sharp. Um, and so every time you're using them, you're going to find that it's not leaving any edging on your paper. And so you definitely need a great pair of scissors. A lot of times people will buy two pairs of scissors, one for paper and one for ribbon. And the reason they do that is because ribbon dulls your scissors down pretty quickly. Um, and so it's nice to have a separate pair for your ribbon and a separate pair for your paper. So you always have a nice sharp edge on that paper when you're cutting it. So one of the fun things you can do is just tie a little piece of ribbon around your ribbon scissors. That way you always know those are the ones to cut ribbon with. And then you have the ones to cut your paper with. So those are our snips. Another one of my favorite tools. Oh, you can tell this one is well loved. You can't even see, <laughs> you can't even see where it says Stampin' Up anymore. I promise it used to say Stampin' Up. Um, this is my bone folder. I do have a couple of other ones floating around somewhere. Um, this is the one I use most often, clearly. Uh, you've got to have a bone folder. I There are ways to get away with not using a bone folder, and I know. I have some friends who they laugh and equate this to um, biting on tin foil, you know, when they have to go over paper. It's just a weird texture to them. I love it. I use this thing all the time. So one of my favorite tools, it gives you nice crisp edges. So if you're folding paper and you need it to be a nice crisp edge, see here? How it's still kind of fat. Even when I crease it, you still get it to pop out. That bone folder, if you use it across, and you're just going to rub it across, is going to give you a much sharper edge so your paper stays closed, especially if you're making cards and you want those cards to stay closed, or if you want any other sharp edges on your paper. That's a good way to do it. Great when you're doing fun folds. Um, you really need something like a bone folder to make sure that your edges stay nice and crisp. So, bone folder. That is my third of my favorite essentials. And remember, if you're just jumping on to get entered into our drawing uh, for tomorrow, so by 6 p.m. tomorrow, Mountain Standard Time, um, make sure you comment with your favorite of these four essentials that I'm showing today. So, show, so far we've got our paper trimmer. Pretty sure that's my favorite. We have our snips, which are our wonderful scissors here. We've got our bone folder, 
mine is well loved. And last but not least is the take your pick tool. And again, mine is well loved too. <laughs> mine, mine gets used a lot. Um, the take your pick tool is awesome. It is kind of one of those essential tools because it gives you, it's a multi-tool, has lots of different things going on. So the large end of your take your pick tool is actually putty. I don't know if you can see, mine's all discolored. It is really a pretty mint color when it's first out. Um, and that putty is actually inside here. So as you use it, and as you use the putty down, it's going to um, allow you to turn it and have more come out the end. So if it starts to get all goopy and gunky, and mine's starting to look a little goopy and gunky, <laughs> um, you can actually peel that off and then, let's see, we'll peel that off there. It's kind of hard to tell on camera, but we'll peel that off. I'm going to turn it. You just have to give it a tiny turn. Don't have to push very hard and more is coming out. You'll squish that down. There we go. And now I've got some fresh putty on there. What you use this putty for is to pick stuff up. So this is gonna pick up all your little um, trinkets, your embellishments, your sequins, little pieces of paper as you need them. Um, and it's not going to hold on to them. So there are other tools on the market, uh, like the, I don't know if that's a brand name, Jewel Picker is what they call them, Jewel Pickers. Um, they have a sticky, ad almost like an adhesive on them. And I'm just, have never liked using them because what happens is everything sticks. And unfortunately, everything sticks and then it never comes off. And I need it to come off on my paper. Um, so this is awesome because it actually comes off when you pick something up. So for instance, I'm going to pick up one of these little jewels here. See how easy that is? It just sticks right there. Awesome. And then I can plop it down wherever I want. Let's decorate these trees here. Um, and it's going to stick and it came off super easy. You notice I didn't have to pull. I didn't have to work at it. It just came right off onto the paper. It's really good for picking up little um, die cuts too. So if you have um, little papers, so like I've got this little, this little guy right here, and then I can set him down exactly where I want him and I'm not fighting it. Um, I love it. Probably one of my favorite tools too. I know it's hard. So I've still, that's why I think it's an essential tool. I think it's a tool you absolutely need. The other side actually has two different tools. It has your metal spatula here. Um, you can see mine is also well loved because it's also very dirty. I need to clean that. Uh, this is great when you make a mistake. Now I know none of you make mistakes when you do your cards, just me. Uh, but when I make cards, oh my goodness. How many times have you put something down, put some adhesive on it, put it down, and you're like, crud, that is not where I wanted that. Or maybe it didn't go down straight. Or uh, for whatever reason, you've got to pull that thing back up. So this is a great tool to do it because it's going to get under your paper and allow you to pull that back up. So if I have adhered some of this paper down and I need to get back in there, you can see it actually gets in between that paper that I've already glued down so that I can either pick it back up again. I can put some ribbon under it. How many times have you forgotten to put your ribbon across when you meant to have some ribbon under there? Well, this allows you to tuck that ribbon into that paper and um, kind of gives you a little bit of a fix there. I love this tool. Again, I use it probably a lot because uh, I make a few mistakes as I'm going. Um, the other side of this tool, it just pops off really easily. There's a little lock here and it shows you, you just turn it to lock. The other one is just a nice sharp, uh, I don't know, like pokey. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. It hurts. Don't try not to uh, poke yourself, but um, I don't know what it's 
what you call it, but it is awesome for your die cuts when you have little pieces. And I wish I had something with a bunch of little pieces in here so I could show you. But as you get a die cut, if you're trying to punch out these little pieces here, it allows you to do that very easily. And then it's all ready to go. Some people use this to pick up their jewels with. That's another option too. Um, that's not my favorite because you have to kind of get under it. So it takes a little more effort to me than using the putty. Um, but some people really like that to be able to position things on their paper. So it's great if you're piercing your paper for any reason. So if you need a hole in your paper to put some ribbon through, um, or if you're working on like tags or anything, you can actually pierce your paper. Oh, pierce. It's a pierce. Is that it? I don't know. Um, but that also has a lid for it, so it keeps it nice and safe so you don't accidentally poke yourself. So, I don't know. Again, that is the take your pick tool. So, make sure you comment. Hi, ladies. Good to see everybody tonight. Make sure you comment on which of these essential tools is your favorite and that you can't live without. Is that your take your pick tool? Is it our snips? Is it our bone folder? Or is it our paper trimmer? You tell me in the comments and that'll get you entered into our drawing. Make sure you comment by 6 p.m. December 2nd to get entered into tomorrow night's drawing. And then come back tomorrow night and see if you won. All right. We're going to go ahead and work on our card here. I love this cute little card. I'll try not to keep you too long tonight. We're going to start by using our paper trimmer. I'm going to try and use all our tools now so you can see how they work in action. So paper trimmer. There are a million ways to trim your paper, and I have pretty much seen everybody I know use this a different way. I use mine upside down, so I don't know if you can see that from there. There you go. I actually position mine upside down, upside down because the Stampin' Up! logo is upside down, and I like the trimmer on the left-hand side. That's weird. I'm not left-handed. That is just... For me, the easiest way to put it. I have a lot of friends who use it sideways, so they actually use the trimmer part facing them, and as they're cutting, they're able to adjust it the way they want it. Again, I think that is just awkward when I'm trying to do it, but I know a lot of people who do. Uh, most people <laughs> use this with the Stampin' Up! logo facing them, so it's facing the correct way, and they use it and they either put their paper toward the bottom to trim or they push it toward the top. Um, but you always want to line it up against these edges. You've got one on each side because it gives you a nice little edge there to make sure you're cutting straight every time. So I'm going to flip mine around because, again, I'm a little strange and I like mine. <laughs> I like to cut upside down. And I'll scoot this up so you can see what I'm cutting. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my paper in. This is just our eight and a half by 11 basic white cardstock. I am just gonna cut it in half. So I'm gonna cut it to five and a half. The nice thing about five and a half is you have a nice long line here for five and a half. So you can line that up, make sure it's straight. And I'm gonna kick that uh, gray blade out of our way. We don't need our embossing, uh, no, scoring blade. And we're going to go ahead and just use our cutting blade. So it's that simple. It doesn't take a ton of pressure and it cuts beautifully. I do want to score it halfway so it makes a nice fold here. So I'm going to go to four and a quarter, which is half of that eight and a half. And now I'm going to pick up my scoring blade. All right. Whoops. I think I got it here. All right. Now I'm going to pick up that scoring blade and just score it down the center. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's hard to see on the white, but there's a nice score line there. When you score it, you want to fold into what you scored. So we're going to actually fold into that bump in the middle. 
So there's kind of a divot where you scored and then there's a big bump on the other side. We're actually gonna fold into the bump. So you wanna fold into the mountain. And that's where we get to use our other fun tool. This is the bone folder. I'm telling you, I love it. Keeps everything nice and crisp. It makes my edges look nice. There's some paper that when you try and fold it, it starts to kind of crinkle around the edges, almost like it wrinkles in. I do love Stampin' Up! paper because it doesn't do that. But one of the ways you can help it to not have those extra crinkles is to use a bone folder. Um, or use a similar tool to be able to help give it a nice crisp edge. So we've used our paper trimmer and our bone folder. Now we've got our page. We're going to go ahead and cut just a few more pages of our designer series paper. Now this is a steal right now and I just checked the website. So if you're looking to make an order, jump on this right away. This entire pack of paper, 12 by 12, is on sale for $4.80. I love this paper. Let me just show you some of the, um, this is the Painted Christmas 12 by 12 designer series paper. And I just have to show you some of these designs in here. They're beautiful. They're all that red and green and holly. And, oh, I love that one. Like, it doesn't get any more Christmas, right? You've got your pine cones, and you've got the beautiful reds. Um, oh, I don't even know if I have any of that paper. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay. Let me pull out all these pages for you, because you've got to see how gorgeous this paper is. And each side is so beautiful. All the greens. We saw that one already. Look at this one. Oh, I love this paper. I'm telling you. I am so sad it's retiring, but I put my order in this morning at 8 a.m. And you bet I put two packs of this on it. I love this paper. Look how pretty that is. So anyway, you I mean, you can't beat that right now. I think I showed you guys all of those. Um, those are all extras that I've had. But $4.80 for an entire 12 by 12 pack of paper. I mean, so anyway, Painted Christmas is that designer series paper, and it is gorgeous. Do not miss out on that. It's so pretty. And we're going to cut that paper to four by five and a quarter. I'm just going to check. I think I might have actually cut one already to the right size. Let's check. Then I don't have to cut anymore can also use this to help measure five and a quarter by whoop, almost four let's trim that edge right there there we go now I've got it so so pretty we're just gonna adhere that right to our card base And remember, this paper is while supplies last, so if you're interested, you got to get on it right now. It will be gone soon. Okay. So pretty. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead and cut one more piece of our white paper down. I'm going to cut that down four and a half by three and a quarter. Four and a half by three and a quarter. And that's going to give me a nice base to start building my card. And we're going to use trees for sale. Now this stamp set is also retiring. I love it. Uh, celebration that happened in July and August did have an extra die set that coordinated, but you don't need that because you got your snips, right? If you want, you can cut these out using your snips. Super easy. Trees are awesome because they're super easy to cut around because um, you're just in, out, in, out, making a bunch of little triangles. Um, so you don't even need the dies for it, but this stamp set is going to go fast, I think. That's my prediction. We'll see. 
who knows? I, I also predicted the other stamps that I was going to use today wouldn't sell out. So um, I'm not always the most reliable, but I love this set. We're going to use our red and green ink. This is our garden green and our real red. And that's going to give us a really pretty Christmas color. And we're going to use our little trees here. We're going to use the larger tree, but we're using these background trees. So I'm going to go ahead and just ink that up. Now I'm going to be double stamping on here. So just as you're watching, you're going to see me stamp once, pick it up and stamp again. And that's going to give us that two tone color. So that's really pretty. All right, we'll do that on the other side too. And then I want one more. I want one more on the left, I think. We'll kind of drop it down a little. All right. Now I'm going to take my little tree. This is actually the medium tree of the set. There's three different trees here. The cool thing is you can layer these trees up, which I think is really pretty when you start playing with this. And you can do some colors, like lighter and darker, or you can even do some embossing. We're going to be doing some embossing later next week, so make sure you come back for that. All right, I've got the little tree now, and I'm gonna go ahead and ink him up, and then we'll do the little tree, and we'll do another little tree, and we'll give him a background there too. I can put my green away, because I'm finished with those. I'm gonna go ahead and use the red to stamp our sentiment. Now, I noticed that I made a little boo-boo. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. I made a little mistake with the green. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to get around that. So I'm going to take just a piece of white card stock that uh, is my scrap paper here. And I'm going to use the So Very Merry Sentiment from the Trees for Sale stamp set. Remember, this is a retiring stamp set, so if you want it, you gotta jump on that. <laughs> hi, Jen, hi, Jeanette. It's so good to see everybody. Thanks for joining me. All right, we're gonna go ahead and stamp our So Very Merry in red. And if you're just joining us, make sure that you comment with which one is your favorite tool that we've used today. So you can get entered into our drawing for a couple of our Christmas cards, including the one we're making right now. So, so very merry, we've gone ahead and stamped that. I'm gonna use my trimmer. Let's close this red so I don't make a mistake again. <laughs> I'm gonna use my trimmer to go ahead and cut, running out of room to go ahead and cut this so very merry down and I'm just going to kind of eyeball it so it has an even amount of white on each side and I might trim it just a little on each side just a little on the top and then I'll trim it a little bit on the bottom as well And that is gonna give me my sentiment, but also allow me to fix my little mistake I had going on. So, you can always rescue, you can always rescue your card. Now this is also gonna give me a chance to use my paper snips again, because I wanna give this um, a little bit of fold on the sides. Um, or a little, uh, flag on the sides. So to do that, I'm going to cut in. I'm going to cut here into my triangle. I'm going to cut into my triangle again. And now I've got a cute little flag on the side there. And I'll do the same here. And we're going to cut in, making a little triangle into this side there we go and now I've got this cute little 
so very merry that I can put right on top here and you'll never even know that I had a little mistake. So using our paper snips, we did that. Now I'm gonna actually bring out my take your pick tool and I'm gonna show you how I use that when I am putting my Stampin' uh, and when I'm putting my, lost my word, Stampin' Foam Essential, Dimensionals, oh gosh, it's been a long day guys. Uh, dimensionals, when I put down my mini dimensionals. So I'm gonna put a couple mini dimensionals, I can't believe I can't think of my words. Um, a couple mini dimensionals here. They do have a back side, so you do have to take off the back side of the dimensional. I actually, I actually use the little piercer side of the tool to do that, and then I can do it all three of them. I've got it, I throw it in the trash, and that way I've just saved myself from finding them on my carpet later, right? Because none of you find them on your carpet later, right? Just me? <laughs> I find them all over the place. They stick to everything too. All right, so we've got our So Very Merry. We're gonna go ahead and build our cute little uh, penguin. So the stamp set I really wanted to show you guys today was our Penguin Place stamp set. This retired and was while supplies last, and guess what? It's gone. So if you have this stamp set, awesome. Um, if you do not, the French version is available. I did check, however, Obviously, you probably don't want your sentiments in French. You don't need this stamp set to build your penguin, though. You just need the penguin punch. And our penguin punch right now is on sale for $7.50. Sorry, guys. <laughs> the boys just walked in. Uh, Forgot to tell them I was going live today. So for $7.50 right now on sale, it used to be $19. So this is a steal right now. You can get our Penguin Punch Builder and I'm gonna show you really quickly how you can build your penguin. So I've already cut out the white. You cut this part in the white. You're gonna cut the larger part in black and then you're gonna cut out two little feet and those you can cut out of, I used Mango Melody. Um, because I just thought that was a great color for that. So I'm gonna use just a scratch piece of black paper here. And I'm just gonna punch out the body. And then we'll put him together. On my sample, I did use the hat and the scarf, and I cut those out using paper snips. Um, we're gonna go ahead and make one without because you, like I said, you don't need the stamp set to be able to make a really cute penguin. And I'm going to show you how you can do that. So we're going to adhere the white to the black. And it's super simple. I'm just going to add a little bit of adhesive right there. Now I'm going to add my little feet. Oh, they're so cute. You just add them at the bottom here. You can make him sitting down. We're gonna make him sitting down for this one. Or you can make him stand up and have his feet underneath him. Uh, there's lots of ways you can position this cute little guy. Starting to run out of adhesive here. There we go. <laughs> All right, got his feet on. Now we're gonna go ahead and just take a black marker and you can take your Stampin' Stampin' Up! has a great black marker you can use. And all we're gonna do is draw two small circles for his eyeballs. So it doesn't have to be anything fancy. If you have a black Sharpie, that'll work too. So we've got two circles for his eyes. And now I'm gonna take our Mango Medley Dark Stampin' Blend and I'm gonna create his little beak here. And so you're just gonna come down and make kind of a triangle. And then I keep going over it until it's the size I want it to be and kind of the shape I want it to be. So super simple. And you can make this cute little penguin without having to have um, the stamps. You just need this punch. 
And again, on sale right now for $7.50. So that's going to sell out. Um, I, I, that's my prediction. If this die, if the stamps already sold out, I'm guessing the punch is going to sell out too because he's super stinking cute. So we're just going to add this little guy right to our card here. And we're going to use our dimensionals again. And I don't need to put a lot on there. He sticks just fine. And again, I'm using my take your pick tool to get those backings off your dimensionals and into your trash can. And we'll stick him on there. We're going to decorate this up with some of our red rhinestones. So I'm just going to pick those right up. And I'm actually going to put those in the trees this time, I think. We'll decorate some of our trees up with these cute little red rhinestones. And maybe we'll put a couple on our sentiment here. So super easy when you use your take your pick tool. Um, using that putty on the end, pick those up and put those down super simply. And then the last thing we need to do is just adhere this to our card front. All right, so just a reminder while I'm doing that, our clearance sale is going on right now and there are some great things on clearance. Don't miss that out on that. Um, there is some this gorgeous real red ribbon. It's a faux linen ribbon. Um, I think it would look awesome with this card or any card. That's on sale for $3, normally $7.50. That's on the clearance rack right now. Um, we've also got a lot of other really beautiful ribbon and embellishments um, retiring from our Christmas catalog, our July through December mini catalog and You'll want to check those out too. All right. Oops, I missed one. There we go. And we'll just stick here that there. And there you go. So very merry. So today we used the take your pick tool, our paper snips, our paper trimmer, always my favorite. And I lost our bone folder. Here it is and our bone folder as well as the trees for sale stamp set to make all of the to make our cute little penguin card also again our penguin punch which is currently on sale at seven dollars and fifty cents so check that out make sure you comment with which one of these four tools the take your pick the snips the bone folder or the paper trimmer which one is your favorite so you can get entered into our drawing to win our cute little penguin card and a couple of other specials that I will, special cards that I'll throw in there for you as well. Our drawing will be tomorrow night at 7.30 for day two of our Stampin' Up! 12 Days of Christmas. And I will see you then. Have a great night.